Good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Folani. Um, today let's talk money. <laughs> so sort of. Um, talking about 4.2 uh, million pounds sterling, so you know where we're going. Um, yeah, so it's the whole matter of the um, returned loot um, from the UK and it's become something of a uh, conversation piece. Um, you, you know that I've heard of OPM, other people's money. It's a genuine term in, uh, in business, but it's like, no, this is not business. The UK is saying that's not, that's not what we're about. Um, we, we will return this money, and the money was indeed returned. But as you know, there's been a whole sort of conversation uh, around it. And indeed, we shall be joining in that conversation. But first of all, um, uh, l let's, let's have some background. First of all, this package. Unless it halts immediately the federal government from further dealing and tampering with the said fund, the recovery loan may not be accounted for and or have any direct benefit to the people of Delta State in terms of infrastructures or people-oriented projects. They have therefore resolved all federal government of Nigeria through the Federal Minister of Finance and the uh, Minister of Justice to stop forth with further appropriation or disbursement of recovered uh, 6.2 million pounds pending the final determination of the matter by the House. Okay, so that wasn't quite what I expected, but um, um, there you are. You, you, you probably um, know the story, and um, indeed in the course of the program, we shall be linking up with um, a number of commentators uh, really to get their say. And of course, you, there's a sense in which you are our number one commentator, so of course uh, we'll be linking up with you. Um, let me tell you, uh, we, we have an array. Uh, Malaki Ugumadu will soon be coming in, and um, former national president and um, proud Delton. Uh, that's important. Uh, former national president, CDHR, he'll be joining us, as will, you know, a politician, a former commissioner in Delta State, Ken Okulubo, and indeed, Alani Waju Suraj. Alani Waju Suraj is the chair of the Civil Society Network Against Corruption. And um, uh, we have a full house today. Comrade Emmanuel Igini, um, Igbini, I beg your pardon, Igbini, I put the B sound in there, not to be confused with our other friend, Igini, no, uh, Comrade Emmanuel uh, a winning, an engineer, activist, and a poli political affairs uh, analyst. Um, so uh, there, that must be the... Okay, th let, let's pause and listen to this a bit. Um, I understand that immediately someone is actually on... Uh, uh, today is going to be that kind of a day. Um, so, as I was saying, we're, we're going to open the phones. In fact, maybe we can even open the phones now because I imagine just about everybody is going to be interested in this matter. What is the right of this matter? What is the sort of um, neutral of this matter? And is there indeed a wrong of this matter? Whose is the 4.2? Uh, uh, who, who is the money? The, who, who, who does the money belong to? Um, you know, <laughs> 4.2 million pounds, that's a bit of tidy change. Um, but it's a matter, uh, as you know, uh, it has been spoken for, and um, not, uh, not everybody is happy with that. It has been spoken for already uh, in sense of uh, it will go towards certain projects. Uh, you can understand if Delton say that, you know, it is, you know, their money, although there's a whole controversy over that, uh, because uh, you recall that Delta um, had said, maybe not very, very seriously, but had said at the time that it's our money. Who did, 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 anybody, did anybody say money was lost? Uh, but now that money has come back because the UK has said we will return our monies, we just want to be sure of what will be done with it if they don't expect it to, um, you know, uh, I, I guess the way to phrase it is um, go into unforeseen um, uh, channels. Uh, let's just put it as delicately as that. So they seem a bit particular about how the money shall be spent. 
And I wonder, really, it's for the facts are there. There's hardly any controversy about it. But what exactly, what what exactly um, do people feel about this matter? Let me let me see if um, Comrade Emmanuel Igbini, uh, who has joined us uh, remotely, um, is up and running. Good morning, uh, Comrade. Yeah, good morning, Uncle Yori. Ah, good. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for, you know, um, making time for us this morning. Now, this whole matter about um, uh, sh sh one the return of 4.2 million pounds um, is referred to as Ibori loot. Um, give me your thoughts on that whole matter and uh, the growing, uh, should I say, controversy over the matter. Whose is it to direct how it is to be spent? Okay, thank you very much uh, for having me, for giving me this pleasure. It's quite a controversial issue, and I, at the end of the day, let me say that I'm going to be controversial. So for that reason, let me just uh, permit me to give a little background of myself. I am not an associate of uh, former Governor Ibori. I am a Dayton, a proud one for that matter. I have never sat or stood next to Ibori today. We have never met face to face. I'm not a member of PDP or APC, but I am a respected political leader in Delta State. Having been a governorship candidate of my party on three occasions, when Governor Dwan was also a candidate in 2007, in the rural election, and in 2011, I'm also known as one of the leading voices that consistently opposed the mismanagement of the resources of Delta State under the leadership of James Ibori and others. Having said that, let me also add quickly that it's on record that there are among few Nigerians like our leader, late Yudani who fought for the creation and establishment of EFCC in order to checkmate the, the looting of resources of our states and our country. Personally, I risk my life defending Nehu Ribado, Lamode, and the pioneer members of ESCC when the powerful Nigerian elite moved against them. Having said that, now let me go straight to the issue at stake. Why is it so important discussing 4.2 million UK pounds that the promise to release to Nigeria or Delta State or whoever. Why? It's been the main issue for discussion around the country for about two days now since the news broke. I feel so disappointed. It shouldn't be. Let me say and let me speak directly to the government of United Kingdom. We are not fools. We are not fantastically stupid people. We are intelligent, blessed by God. We know what is going on. The British government cannot fool us and continue to fool us. This is what they did with the so-called Abacha loot. This is what they've been doing with so much money. The British government know that if not for the massive looting of the resources belonging to the people of Nigeria, from around Nigeria into their country, they will not have the amount of wealth that they boost around it. We challenge them. Okay, but sorry, comrade. When, when when you, come comrade, comrade, if you can hear me, um, when you say the so-called, you. and you, you, you said the so-called uh, Abacha loot, for example, thereby implying that, you know, this is more the same. Um, uh, it, it, there was a whole judicial process. Judgment was entered. Guilt was admitted. Confiscations were made. And now they are returning it. Uh, now, which part of that is wrong or bad? What I'm trying to say, Uncle Yori, and Nigerians listen to me, our elite, majority of them, have unfortunately engaged in what I call unpatriotic corruption. And no wonder a former prime minister of Britain described us as people who are fantastically corrupt, because we are stupid. We are foolish. And as I'm talking to you, we are still exporting the loot from our country into UK. You heard the ambassador of uh, the British uh, ambassador say 
they open their doors wide for us to come and move our resources into their country. And when they are done, they close it and begin to, you know, tell us that, oh, well, we found some loot here, and then we are going to be releasing them in, tren in, in tranches. All of those things, we are not put. I blame ourselves. I'm not one of those to be excited that the British government is telling us that they are going to release to a mega 4.2 million pounds. Even when President Buhari was then military head of state, have we forgotten what the British government did to frustrate the effort of uh, President uh, then General Muhammad Buhari, head of state, and his deputy, the God bless his soul, uh, Tune Diago, for dealing with this issue of corruption? Have we forgotten the boldness that both of them took in retaliating the uh, British government, refusing to cooperate? They shut down British uh, airways here. They the British government frustrated our effort. Uh, uh, okay, I think uh, we are in this mess. I, I hear you, comrade. Um, one moment, please. Let me get um, uh, other views. Um, you probably, you know, uh, because um, I think a, a phrase that has become sort of popular now is that um, uh, uh, recollections may differ. Um, uh, so I'm, I'm coming over to you now, um, Ken. Uh, Sir Ken Ukulubu, former commissioner. Yes, in Delta I can City. hear you. Good morning, Ken. Um, Give Morning. Me. It's a pleasure, uh, Yuri. Okay, sir. Um, give me your give me give me your take on this whole conversation, shall we say? Well, the, the truth about the truth about it is that we, we when we talk about the four point two million pounds, we fail to forget that these funds have been uh, held since twenty twelve. Uh, if you check the entire amounts that are forfeited, the Attorney General was uh, economical with the truth when he said that he did not want to name the associates of Shi uh, Fonanefe Buri, who were part of those that those funds were recovered from. He's uh, the former First Lady of Delta State, uh, uh, Okoye Buri, was one of those people because uh, the, I remember the house at Hampstead was one of those that were supposed to be the ones that were uh, recovered. And that house, as at that time, was valued. The former governor was also among one of those that funds were recovered from. So we're talking about a total of 6.2 million pounds so the question here is, where is the extra two million pounds? And what was the interest from 2012 till date? So the mm. British government did not come clean when they told us it was only 4.2 million pounds they were returning. Mm. And if you look at the DFID, which is the Development uh, Fund International, which has just been um, which has just been merged because of the complaints against the DFID. You, you recognize that the DFID was sole government, and it is million pounds was returned to Bielsa and handed over to two officials of Bielsa state government, and was paid into the first bank account of Bielsa state government in London. That the British government will want to now tie these funds to the Abuja Kano Road, tie these funds to the Second Niger Bridge. And also to the Lagos, also to the Lagos Ibadan Road is is an insult to the people of Delta and Uncle Yori. Okay, it is, it one is moment, a, second. It is an aberration. Okay, I, I hear you, second. W one moment, please. I'll come back to you, of course. Um, uh, Alani Raju Suraj. Good morning, sir. Chair, Civil Society Network Against Corruption. Your take. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. Please go ahead. Um, what's your, give, give us your take, please, on this whole uh, conversation. <laughs> so, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. We can hear you. Hello, Mr. Folari. Larry, we can hear okay. you. Okay, good. All right. I, 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 was, I was asking for okay. your... Okay. If you've been following... And you've heard all the contributions so far. I, I, w I wonder what your take is. I, I think this is an important and interesting discussion. Uh, and I'm happy that we're engaging uh, the process and also the development uh, I mean, from the side of the civil society. And I'm so happy 
that this is also giving us an insight, looking at um, Delta State uh, as a very typical example of, of how the state um, can also take advantage and benefit from loot recovery. There's, there's no doubt in the fact that this is not just a cause for celebration, but it's also a challenge, uh, a cause for worry uh, for us as a country, that we are the center of even talking about returning or recovery of, of um, looted funds and assets. It is a shame that we've had our leaders, you know, um, taking the national, uh, national resources or even state resources outside the country to benefit their individual and family ben uh, uh, personal benefit and the rest of at the expense <coughs> of the people. Uh, but the most controversial issue is whether it would go to Delta State or not. Uh, yes. If you ask me, uh, I would say it should be, not just go to Delta State. It should be for the benefit of the people of Delta State, the victims of corruption. Uh, so now, is the, is the people of Delta State currently better served by the government of Delta State? If you ask me the question, the answer for me is no. Mm -hmm. uh, does the people of Delta State have potential benefit uh, to derive from just the outright return of that fund to Delta State? Um, for me, again, the answer to that is no. Uh, so uh, if we want the people of Delta State to actually benefit from that fund, we must, be, under this current uh, dispensation, uh, we must discover and fashion out a special way for which this fund is still going to be managed. There's no doubt in the fact uh, that the convicted former governor of Delta State uh, is still in control of the political machineries of the state. So I have no doubt in my mind that if that fund goes back to Delta State, it's likely going to end up back in the pockets uh, of um, former Governor James Ibori, who still reigns supreme uh, in the political terrain of Delta State. Uh, it is unfortunate that the people, the, governor, the government of Delta State earlier said that the money was not missing uh, from their coffer. I mean, that was uh, not just a public statement, it was also uh, a, 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 a statement of um, pleading in court uh, by the government of Delta State. But the most important thing is that we know that beyond just these 4.2 million pounds, the people of Delta State have suffered and are still suffering from misgovernance that has bedeviled that state, like many other states across the Federation. And for that reason, the focus of any intervention that would be derived from this money would be the people of Delta State primarily and the government of Delta State secondary. Uh, so if the federal government is going to fix all the federal roads, all the federal facilities and social infrastructure in Delta State, I am for it. Uh, we must have a means of getting the media, the civil society, okay. the federal government, mm -hmm. and possibly the, the, the um, British well, government to be part of the process of administering the utilization of the funds. Indeed. Uh, okay. Thank you, Larry, in the first instance. And, and that, no doubt, is coming from... And uh, uh, we've been joined by, you know, uh, Malaki Ugumadu, who former president of National CDHR, uh, that I spoke about in the opening. Uh, a very good morning to you, uh, Malaki. Thank you for having me. Good indeed, morning, viewers. Indeed. And um, I, I, as you just heard Larry Surat speak there, um, I think his premise, perhaps like a lot of people, is that um, uh, the, the, the source of the funds in question is it, it, uh, quite, frankly, Delta State. And uh, there's been admission of guilt, there's been conviction. Now we have a situation where the money is returned uh, Larry and I think other people are opining that this should be for the benefit of uh, Delta State. But as you know, it has already been spoken for uh, at that ceremony. Give me your take, Malaki. <laughs> well, <laughs> the funds have been spoken for. Well, I, I thank those who have spoken mm. earlier, Larry in particular. Yes. Uh, uh, having spoke, uh, those that have spoken, Ken Kolubo has spoken earlier. Uh, uh, comrade uh, Emmanuel Igbini has also spoken. I wouldn't know what their perspectives is. I, yeah. I, I had uh, but you heard, Larry. Yeah. I'm from Delta State. I'm from Ndokwa East of Delta State. Mm -hmm. And I'm from one of the smallest hamlets. And when you talk about deprivation and failure of leadership, I can speak directly to it. So what is not in dispute is that this money in question is money belonging to the Delta State people. And I'd like to be clear about that. 
have had a lot of commentaries. Is it, is it, the Delta State government and Delta State people is one and the same. Well, um, to the extent that the victims in this case is, are the people of Delta State, I like to be clear about that. Okay. Uh, because part of the concern is that we have seen situations in the past where monies returned, where indeed found their way back to those who were accused of taking them. And therefore, I am particular about returning this money to the data state people. The reason being that if you look at what has just happened, it left no one in doubt that these were funds that ought to be appropriated and used for the benefit of the people. These funds found their ways in private pockets, orchestrated by the leadership of James Ibori, who is a convict. Uh, the amount in question now, I understand, it was recovered from those related to him. The bigger chunk of the money, the greater percentage of this money in question was actually traced to him directly, and they are still out there at large. So what we do with this one, we set the precedence. So locally, let's face it locally, and I'm going to speak to the law. It is that the Constitution itself has been interpreted by a life case taken up to the Supreme Court, and I'm referencing the case of the Attorney General of Lagos State against the Attorney General of the Federation, where the Supreme Court took a very sound position that the federal government has no virus, no locus whatsoever, to appropriate the funds meant for the Lagos State government. That is, of course, you will remember that protracted case. Now, if you, if you extrapolate that with what is an issue now, mm. you will be reminded that Delta State government was entitled throughout the period of James E. Boris administration, 1999-2003, to statutory allocations. And that these allocations, most of which have been found to be diverted, and they have become the subject of clear criminal credible prosecution. In far away London, where they have been found to be stolen. Mm -hmm. In short, even the, though the, found, the, the finding was different uh, locally. Oh well, in, the finding. In short, the finding was that it couldn't even take off. It, it, you remember, it was about 172 count charge, reduced to 170 before Justice Awokule at Asaba, and it was that there was no case whatsoever. It fell like a pack of cards. The same body of evidence were used in the London court and convictions were secured. In short, before convictions were admissions, the lawyers, the bankers of this man were all indicted and convicted. Mm. So the good news is that there is no ambivalence as to where that money is coming from. There is also no difficulty from the language of the prosecution, the prosecutor itself, he said, describing James Ivory, he said, here is a man who don't knew nothing about governance, but stole his state dried and left the people impoverished. Okay. So by the state of our laws and by precedence, and by precedence I mean the case of Plato Stout, Plateau State, regarding the recovered loot uh, in London against uh, uh, Joshua Dari, it was returned to the, 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 the coffers of uh, uh, Plateau State. The same thing with mm -hmm. DSP Alamese in Bayasa State. Mm -hmm. So you so cannot well. be talking of. So it became a bit provocative. I'm speaking now, not as a lawyer, yeah. but as a, de as as a, a Delta, as a victim. You feel it of very this, of, the, of this prey of looting. Mm -hmm. I have told you on this station that I see use canoe, flyboat to my village. 
Yes. The almighty oil rich data state. Okay. And if Kolubo has spoken, Kolubo is from the other part of the local government, will I also confirm? He can confirm that. Okay, let me bring uh, let, 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 Sakai and Kolubo. Uh, did you want to react to anything? First and foremost, I'm happy you have Malaki there, another uh, very strong Delta, and whose voice is very loud on national issues. I have been on a program with Suraj before now, and I think Suraj is someone I see as seeing things objectively. Uh, I take an exception to the uh, impression Suraj has given that the present government in Delta State is uh, not working. It, it, it beats my imagination when last Suraj said Delta State. Ah. Well, I will not go brief as I'm not part of Delta, I'm not part of that government. But I'll clearly say that over a thousand kilometers road in the last couple of years have been done by that government. And I'm aware that there's a road from Uwele to Wari, which is costing 21 billion, which is for the federal government of Nigeria. The Agbo to uh, Amukwe stretch, which is supposed to be dualized, which is a federal government initiative. I have been one person that challenged our governor over the road. I said, Mr. Governor, they call you roadmaster. But anybody coming to Delta will not agree that you're a roadmaster when they go on this stretch. And he voiced his frustration that the roads that they keep doing, they don't refund them, and they tell them not to touch these roads. Mm. Then again, if you want to talk about appropriating the money like Suraj was, was suggesting, why didn't they appropriate the money for this stretch of road, which uh, Malaki knows very well? Of course, Malaki's area, we have complained about the deprivation in Malaki's area. Which, of course, we, I will not deny the fact that there are a lot of communities you still assess with Kenya. But it does, the same Delta State government is doing a bridge in Benikuku for over, over a billion naira. But it's, is that enough? It's relative if you look at the funds that are produced by the Ndukwa East people, okay. the funds that have been injected into that place. We have complained about federal government deprivation. But what we are saying in the nutshell is not coming to say whether the government is working or the government is not working. Okay. But to give the let, 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 let me so, so, Sorry, one, one because, moment. It's okay. I, 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 I beg your pardon for interrupting you. Thank you very much. I beg your pardon for interrupting you, but I must interrupt you yeah. because you've mentioned Larry's Rajik a number of times, and I just wanted him to uh, come back on that, if you will, uh, Larry, before I go over to uh, Comrade uh, I, 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 Igbini. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Polari. I think it is important, and I totally, I think Okolubo, my brother was just a bit, yes, as a Delta, maybe you are a bit uh, uh, sentimental, and then also to defend the government. You said you were not going to defend, but you ultimately did that. The truth of the matter is, I can say governance is really working in Nigeria. I'm from Ogun State, and I can tell you the governor and the government of Ogun, in Ogun State is not different from the government in Delta State. I wouldn't tell you that any of the government that is merely tying roads, uh, building uh, exercise center and youth development center, building Madrid center in rivers, this is not governance. So we can say we, we can say we can say that is actually a government working. But since we have reduced working of governance to that level. So let us go there. No, we haven't. Said, we, we, we haven't. I don't, think, that 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 Larry, I don't think we have reduced of governance to that. By the fund from the Fed. Hello? Larry, Hello? We, we, we haven't. Uh, I, 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 am not, I have not justified. No, no, sorry. No, we I haven't have reduced governance to the level of exercise centers. To, yes. Well, yeah, this is, I mean, for me, that is really, really uh, ridiculous. But the most important thing, is that I don't agree and support the government using the more government the, the money to construct legal legal Sibado express road and I will be part of Deltans to carry placard uh -huh. in protest for that. Okay. I don't support the government. I, I, I hear you, you, Larry. Larry, I've got to interrupt you one more time Delta. because they're quite a lot well, of you that. remotely, um, you know, configured. Uh, sorry about that, but um, Comrade Igbini, did, did you want to um, uh, contribute to the matter? Where it has got to now, where the, the stage we've got to now in this conversation, Comrade Igbini, are you still there? We have lost Comrade Igbini. Comrade no, Igbini, it is it's, it's away. Oh, um, I, I'm just told that we unfortunately lost uh, Comrade uh, Igbini. Um, so uh, back to Malaki in in studio. Um, so. If you throw, throw it at me, yes. I will run with it immediately. Okay. <laughs> and that is to say, I had tried to look at it from the municipal laws and the cases that have been established undisputedly as to what should happen 
when you have such looted funds. And the point or our argument is that there shouldn't be any form of discrimination when it comes to the people of debtors. State. Let, let me hold it there, please, because it's a fine place. Uh, it's nowhere near a complete what you wanted to say. But uh, I understand that um, Comrade Emmanuel Igbini is back on line. Um, so, Comrade, uh, I wonder how much of you know the past few minutes you have actually heard, and I wanted to you know bring it around to you to get your input too uh, on on this matter. There are some. Did you hear the sort of um, argument uh, uh, between, you know, uh, Larry Suraj and um, Okolubo? Um, you know, I don't know if you heard any of that and you wanted to comment on it. Yes, Okolubo. thank you very much. I heard both of them. Even my brother, Malak. Especially the three of us are from the industry. Yes. Okolubo, myself, and Malak. Where we all come from, we know. And, and, and even, even, even Larry Suraju, who isn't from Delta State, say he will be seen among those carrying placards uh, over the whole matter about uh, <laughs> it should be used towards the legacy by the expressway. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, let me say that uh, it is an insult, I repeat myself, that anyone would say that uh, it is proper for British government to tell us data, how to utilize our money. Never mind that some of us have uh, actually destroyed integrity of the people of data. We are not stupid people. We know what we are doing. What British government are you talking about? The share not part of British government. What is share doing worry here? What did they do? So please, nobody should insult our intelligence. This is a state where we make hundreds of billions of naira. You are talking about a mega 2.2 billion or so, Naira. How much is that? Now, to my brother, I can. Uh, I want to tell you, brother, uh, I know you are PDP, but I didn't expect that uh, you'd be talking about a uh, performance of, uh, I didn't want to discuss anything about Okoa and Nico. But to say that there is one project, 1,000 kilometer of road, I was the director general of direct labor agency. You know that when you were a commissioner of the special. I stay in Wari. I am speaking with, from my house in Wari. So let us not bring that issue, otherwise we're going to a different... Everybody's angry. Very, very angry. Okay. You must tell uh, us uh, the plain uh, truth. Uh, uh, okay, Comrade, uh, uh, Comrade Ibini, I've heard you. Uh, 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 back to studio here uh, with um, uh, Malaki Ugumadu, who I, I interrupted when you came back online. Uh, please continue. So, morally, it is wrong. Legally, it is wrong. We have situated the legal situation within the context of what the law is here mm -hmm. and the position of the law is. Mm -hmm. Even internationally, if you, if you checked out Section 35 of the United, Nation, United Nations Convention Against Corruption, it makes a provision that clearly supports the position that where looted funds, proceeds of corruptions are recovered, it must be applied to the victims of that deprivation. People like us, people like me. So, where so, the, so to where the extent where did that, that whole idea come from of uh, expending it outside I, I, of the people. I, I, I'm going to be. I'm, I'm going to be a bit. Uh, well, it is to go straight to say that the quality and content of even legal advice that the political class, the ruling class, is getting is suspect. And I'm saying this with, with a very serious sense of responsibility. So how do you want the people of their trust it? I'm talking of the, the, the victims of this madness. By the way, it is, it is a big shame, a big slap, that how many years James Iberi left leadership in their trust it? The lingering, the lingering, the lingering and perennial looting spree that characterize and continuing. In short, what I'm proposing this morning is not that the, the money should go back to Delta State government. And that's why I'm insisting it should go back to the people of Delta State. How do we achieve that? Mm -hmm. A trust fund, if the federal government is sincere and interested, what they should do is to create and establish a trust fund 
in partnership with the people of Delta State. If the Delta State government want to participate, of course, good and fine. But it must be constituted by people of proven integrity, not uh, the usual hundred, few, mm -hmm. to monitor and administer this fund to the needs of the of people the who people. have been deprived uh, that is from, the the, from the stealing of, of James Ibori and, and his team. Okay. Uh, Kenneth Kolobo. Yes, Yuri. Uh, okay. Uh, a, a good way to go with what Malake has said. What, one thing is, we know the, Delta, the people of Delta are the victims. But uh, with what my brother said, he, been, he didn't quite understand where I was coming from. All I was just trying to tell Suraj was that the picture he painted initially was as if the government of Delta State was completely not doing anything. And I wanted to at least correct that impression that when we now start denying and saying that our government is sorry that we cannot trust, how can we now fight for the funds to be returned to us? when we have already said we cannot even give this government any measure of trust. For a, an example, uh, like uh, I said earlier, we have very critical federal uh, rules which the federal government has refused to intervene. In fact, one of the things that I've always been shocked is that Fashola has done nothing in terms of our federal rules in Delta. And so if the federal government, which has refused to allow us benefit from the Sukkot funds, really wants to show us love, they should have tied this project. Since the British government has said that, look, we are not going to allow those funds to be released except you nominate projects which will be, which these funds will be invested into. They should have tied this project into that at least Amukwe Agbo Road, which needs critical intervention. Uncle Yori, you have not been to that road. You need to see this road. It's an embarrassment. It's as if we are living in the in the old stone age. You will not even believe it's the 21st century. If they had tied this to federal government projects, we will not even be complaining as much as we are complaining. But we will not sit down and allow them use Delta funds to for Abuja Kanu Road, a rail, or Second Niger, Second Niger Bridge, or Lagos Ibadan Road. It is totally wrong. OK, OK. Um, Lannis Raj. Yes, sir. Please. Um, if, you felt there's a, if you feel there's a need to, you know, uh, comment on that, because um, uh, Ken seems to have addressed what he thought might have been a misperception uh, of your position. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, I had addressed that uh, okay. anyway, and All I right. laid the premise to understand that when we talk about governance, you know, some of these things that we call governance really are not governance. Okay, but yeah. if we reduce it to the level for which they are, then okay. that is fine. So that can assist us. So okay. then, but I am happy that all of us have a point of convergence on the need that we agreed. Basically, that first, the government has no justification, legally or otherwise, to choose to divert that recovered fund for Abuja, Kano Road, or Lagos, Ibadan Express Road. That is number one. Number two, the primary beneficiary, and that is also is part of the mutual uh, um, agreement and understanding between Nigeria and the rest of them, that the fund will have to be used for the ultimate benefit of the victims of the corrupt practices or the corruption. Mm -hmm. So which are the people of Delta State? So the, the third point is, how do we then ensure that this fund is not subjected to another looting of the recovered loot? Okay. Number one. Well, well you, you, you heard part of his suggestion in that regard. Um, uh, about a trust fund that that was his contribution but but let me take sorry Larry let me take this uh, back to comrade uh, Emmanuel Igbini um, uh, and the point that um, Ken Okulubo uh, had made that you might have misunderstood him are, are we all on the same page now I'm still struggling to be on the same page with him but I can okay please let, let us know the point about the emergence. politics yeah. of uh, let us know it let me raise, uh, I mean, address the issue raised by Kulugu and so many, I mean, uh, my brother Suraja. Mm -hmm. I agree with him. We have reduced governance to this very unfortunate uh, level. What we are talking about 2.2 billion. What is 2.2 billion? You know, my point is that I keep saying it. This matter has been said to Ibori admitted. Ibori isn't the only one. Recall, Okuyori, that when Yuhu Ribado appeared before the Senate and disclosed the list of governors of Nigeria he called corrupt. In fact, he described the governor of the then Zamfara state. That his case is so very, very disgusting that that one was just outright stealing. All of them. 
So my worry all the time is why are we laying so much emphasis on the bori bori? But you know, the matter has been settled. What no. political? Oh, is it a crime for him to be a political leader? Are the other governors who will look them more than he did? I'm not holding brief for him. I've said so. Are they not political leaders of their of their state and even national? What is this hope? Who is afraid of Ibori? Let me also tell you that it was all political. Okay. The issue was political. The same. Of, well, let me let me land of Ibori. Let me land so that the truth be told once and for all. Ibori's case started. This problem started because of disagreement he had with certain leaders in Delta State over the choice of who were uh, succeeding. The moment he decided to support uh, his cousin, Governor Duan, he launched the attack. They launched the attack. Under Governor Jonathan, Ibori's position was very, very clear. He was all repentant that he insists that power must, retain, uh, must be retained in the north, even though Jair Adua died. And then many, many of them within the same PDP then said that uh, he was against our brother Jonathan. And then they launched this attack. One of them told me, so few years ago, we met in Abuja. He said, Look, Bagua, let me tell you, Ibori was even not before killer for daring to challenge uh, uh, Gulu Jonathan for emerging as uh, the president. So all those happened. Even later, let me see her, may so rest in peace. When this attack in 2010 came hot because of Ibori's uh, position, Alamisia said, Look, that they should stop this persecution against Ibori. Okay. I have heard you, Comrade Igwini. I, I, I've heard you, Comrade Igwini, but I've now got to take a phone call. And I, I hear that Mr. Ade in the UK is on the line. Good morning, sir. Good morning, King of Presenter. I'm not hearing really your beat. Huh? Hello? Uh, okay. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, carry on, please. Okay, King of I, I want to correct that uh, uh, comment in being. Please let me stop saying 42.2 billion. That is a lot of money. Mm -hmm. What is good language at all? Mm -hmm. You know, what is 2.2 billion? Let him go and share the money now if he has the money to the for Delta. That money belongs to Delta people. But my only is that he should use the money for punishment to give to the widows, the offer, and pay school fees of Delta that are over six years. It's not giving the money to the government. That is now a part of that. And the second part is that uh, we see in the North TVC. And we in Gastora, and we uh, they are saying that we should increase your time to two hours. This uh, program is not in one hour again. So I use that mandate to increase to two hours. Indeed. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for calling in. Um, yes. Yes, please. Well, well uh, I think two issues have arisen from mm. the last uh, discussions. The one is the correction that uh, Mr. Day has made from London. Um, that I, 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 2.2 2 billion is a, yes, is a no, great deal. No, no, no. We need to be very circumspect when we speak to the public. And uh, I have enjoyed, is it Igbini? Yes, yeah, that's until, uh, Comrade until, uh, until he Emmanuel made, Igbini. He made his last... Until he got to how uh, much is... Even if, it is even if it is just 100,000 naira. That 100,000 naira could be responsible to save many lives that I know have been lost there, either for the absence of ordinary dispensary home. Mm. Or I have told you once a time when we had a situation in which an elderly woman became ill, she couldn't ferry herself from Abala Ushumili across the river to fetch uh, pain relief uh, drugs. Two able-bodied men had to join him. Them and they all, they, you know, they all died mm -hmm. during. A, a, they all cap capsized. Okay. The boat capsized and they all died. So oh. I lost her instead of the, the sick woman. Yeah. So where? So that is on the one side. The other side is that we, we, there is a sense in which we must find a way of showing collective resentment okay. and disapproval okay. oh. of discussion around thieves who have left us. People who have led us, who have uh, been adjudged and convicted mm -hmm. by competence mm -hmm. of court of law. Mm -hmm. And I say this because the politics of it many, aside, of, many of them, many of them have not just been welcomed. Their profile is even rising in those places, including entrilling governments. Okay. And which is why we are saying uh, that in, money should not go there. Charles in the UK. Good morning, sir. Oh, dear. 
I think just as I announced him, um, the line gave way. So sorry about that, Charles. Uh, Charles called in from the UK. Uh, please keep your calls coming. Um, we, we actually, okay, uh, you, I have to interrupt so, you. So that is the point. The point being that we have not, we're not just provoked by this statement of the Attorney General, who has not just distributed, in principle, this money. He has identified projects outside Delta State, where I come from, where these monies will be ap applied. Secondly, is to, be, to, is to ensure that the suggestion of a trust fund, mm -hmm. the reason being deficit in trust of the present government, we know the role, even this James Ibole played, in the emergence of the present government. And the skepticism that the debtors have regarding what will happen to that money is rooted in that. To say that this man is not just still a power broker, he is in charge of that asset. In fact, talking about uh, James, James Ibori. Ibori, and the, the way the person who is sincere and bold enough he is aware of what I'm talking about. What then do you La do in Larry, that Larry circumstance? Made the point. What then do you do in the mm -hmm. circumstance? Mm -hmm. It so is, it you is think the trust, no, is, it the trust is fund correct. is the answer. Um, uh, Ken, uh, would you agree with that? That one of the ways to, to ensure that justice is done in the sense that the injured shall be the beneficiaries, uh, a trust fund is probably one of the better ways out, if not the best. As much as uh, we can, we know a lot of people have betrayed their trust in government. <laughs> that is certain and that is not debatable. And we are still fighting the issue of corruption in government. But if we go by the way of trust fund, mm -hmm. the UK government is not the first time, even the Abacha Lutz has been tied to specific projects. What I have suggested and should have been better is the impunity with which the Attorney General decided to allocate the money that should have been allocated by the uh, Delta State House of Assembly. We have condemned it roundly. Then we should have gone by the way of tying these funds. If he says he had no choice but to tie specific projects, so specific federal projects, which is not uh, not just a state, not just like tied to so these federal projects okay. that we are suffering in Delta, mm. then we could have even managed to accept it. You understand? But specifically now tying it to projects outside of Delta is what not be accepted. That's so they should go back and tie it to projects. I'm not saying they shouldn't tie it to projects, but no. it should be projects that should be beneficial to Delta. Oh, okay. Uh, Charles in the UK, thank you for trying again. Good morning. <laughs> well, um, I hear that um, you got in, Charles, and then it happened again. Uh, we lost the connection again. Um, uh, Larry Suraj, um, well, w w give me your thoughts on the matter of, um, uh, well, one, the suggestion of a trust fund, and then, you know, Ken saying that, yeah, we, we've heard that before. Uh, laudable as that idea sounds, it, it might not really sort the matter out. What do you think? No, I, I think we should um, move to, I, I don't want to dwell into uh, the discussion about which of the ruling of political elite is no, more no, no, no. than yes. the other one. That yes. for me is not a discussion. I'm mm -hmm. not going to go into that. I, I'm more interested in dealing with this issue the of money. not allowing them to take benefit of their criminal activities by enjoying the recovery of, of the proceeds of crime. Mm -hmm. And so for that reason, I, I think we can take it from here that as we are all seated, I mean, the four of us, we have points of agreement. The other disagreements are political. The point of agreement is that the Delta State people, and I'm not talking about government, I'm saying the Delta State people are the victims of the corrupt practices of uh, James Ibori. They should be the ultimate beneficiaries of the recovered fund. And for that reason, we can agree, even the four of us can agree to take immediate and necessary action to challenge the position of the authority of the attorney general and the federal government by extension and ensure that that fund is not for whatever reason used for the specified purposes if it is going to be by court action if we're going to write a petition to the british government and say this is an abuse of the agreement signed with nigeria and for that purpose we want the variation of the agreement signed with the attorney general who has not justifiably represented the people of Delta State in this matter. Okay. And for that reason, we must ensure 
that, that we don't reduce it to just talk. We must take the necessary action and ensure that this fund is for the ultimate benefit of the people of Delta State. Okay. Comrade Igbini, are you in agreement? Very well. Very well. Uncle Yori, do you remember how the uh, a film titled My Baby? It was a case of a surrogate mother. Surrogate in America in the 80s. The owner of the baby remains the mother of the baby. This money is owned by the people of Delta State. There's no doubt about that one. Simple and clear. Let me quickly now address the point I made about the budget. I am pained. I don't speak political. I have suffered. I died to general. Ken can testify. Udua can testify. Okua can testify. My record is still unbeaten. Yet I was punished for refusing to join the little, the looting gang. What I'm saying that where massive looting is taking place, why should we not allow 2.2 billion dollars to be the main issue? And you know, you've been, you've been criticized for referring to that money as only. I have to. You've been criticized for referring to that money as only. Comrade Igbini, can you hear me? Can you hear me? You've been criticized for calling that money only. Uncle Yori, we are entitled to our criticism. I don't play politics and I'm not. So I'm very, very fair when I talk. My records are there. Okay. The 2.2 billion era, I know the, 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 the length of road I was able to rehabilitate in Delta State when I was at the job of DLA. So okay. I'm not saying that it's not money. Okay. 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 Let, let, let me take, let me take on another way if I got that right in the UK. Good morning. Good morning, Yori. Thank you for calling in. Good morning. Go ahead, please. Yeah. Um, actually, I want to disagree with. Yeah, actually, I want to disagree with some of the contributors in your studio. Sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm going on. I'm talking already. We can hear you. I said I'm disagreeing with most of your contributors this morning. Okay, tell us your view. This sheep, or whatever you call him, sheep, or yeah, is not a sheep. This man that stole this money from his people, he still up to today a kingmaker in his in that very state. If that money should be sent down there, if that money should be sent down to, to Delta State, that money will that money will have sure. It's, it's not it's someone who's supposed to hide his face in shape. You see going up and down, making Making decision on that very state. Uh, uh, okay then. Well, I, I, I want to thank you for your contribution. Uh, it's you know it, we we value it, but we've completely run out of uh, time now. And in fact, I'm going to seize the same opportunity to um, thank as well um, Sir Ken Okolubo, former commissioner in Delta State, who's been remotely with us, as well as uh, Mr. Larry Raju Siraj. Well, actually, like to say, comrade uh, Larry Raju Siraj, chair of Civil Society Network Against Completion. Uh, Corruption and um, comrade Emmanuel Igbini, uh, engineer, activist, and politica, political affairs analyst. Thank you all, gentlemen, for coming on and giving us a variety yeah, of opinion. You. And um, I, I didn't thank Malaki because he's, we're, we're going to do the last few seconds in studio, sure. after which I'll be able to thank him. So, very, very briefly now, Malaki. Um, people seem, people have said that, look. Chief James Ibori is very much still politically relevant, and you can't count him out there. And so they are concerned that even going the funds going back there, uh, how safe would that be? So my suggestion becomes uh, almost indispensable, and that is because by that measure, you're going to bring in people of courage, people of integrity, to manage. people mm. who will ensure yeah. that that which was intended for this for these funds, which is self-appropriation, mm. becomes a community appropriation. You know, we're going to have to leave it there because we've completely run out of Thank time. You. And it's an excellent idea, but we'll wait to see how all of this goes, uh, how funds from Delta, uh, you know, return to Delta, uh, end up, you know, actually aiding the legacy battle. I said that we should all continue to be ashamed of this category of persons whose, uh, whose, uh, whose fraudulent activities have embarrassed all of us. That's Malaki Ugumadu. Uh, lawyer and former uh, national president of the Committee for the Defense of Human Rights. Thank you very much. Thank you for your opportunity. Indeed, that's our program. We've got to leave it here. Fast, but we've run out of time. Um, 
yeah, well, maybe in media. Just remember the COVID thing that we are all involved in. Wash your hands as frequently as you can. Avoid crowds. Mask up. Is there one more? I forgot. You know about it. I'm Yuri Polani. Bye-bye for now. Thank you.